Hi guys, Darth Deuces here, back on our Star Wars The Vintage Collection action figure review. Today, taking a look at the newly released uh, Mandalorian Fleet Commander as he appeared in Season 3 of The Mandalorian, commanding the uh, captured Imperial Light Cruiser with the Privateers, Axe Wolves, and all those guys. Um, a figure I wasn't 100% uh, sold on, I guess. I was considering maybe passing on this. Um, I'm trying to cut down on getting figures in both the same character in both six inch and three and three quarter inch. Uh, we did see this guy released in the six inch line really late last year slash early this year, depending on when you could have got your hands on it. I think I got mine early this year. I don't think I got it in 2023, but I can't really remember. Uh, but I did get the black series version and it's a pretty good figure. I'm pretty happy with it. So you know, do I really need this version in three and a quarter inch? Well, I saw it in, in stores, you know, and you know how it is. You see new figures on the shelves, you know, you're enticed to buy. And I just like collecting Mandalorians at the three and three quarter inch scale anyways. Um, just having all those different colors and whatnot on the shelf in that scale. I just really like that. So I decided to pick them up. But uh, yeah, here he is in the packaging. It's got the Mandalorian there. I think a pretty good image of the character. Uh, utilized for the card back and then you've got the figure the little blue backdrop that I think looks uh, works pretty well uh, with this character and card back and then on the back you have just the uh, write up in multiple languages and then a picture of the figure and all the legalese and whatnot but uh, that's pretty much it so I'm gonna get them cracked open and we'll take a closer look I got the figure out of the packaging, and it's a pretty cool one. Uh, you know, if you've been collecting the Mandalorian figures, you kind of know what to expect to a certain degree, because even if there's new stuff, it's still pretty similar in terms of engineering and whatnot. But uh, this figure actually does have a fair amount of new tooling. You know, you'd expect it to be pretty much all reuse or pretty close to that, but there's a lot of new going on here. And I think the Black Tooth 6 inch one was similar to that as well. It had a lot of new going for it. But taking a look, I don't have any of these accessories on them or anything. Um, the head sculpt and face print, I think, looks decent. Um, I don't know if it's 100%. I don't think I'd say it's 100% likeness to the actor who played the character. But it is a good sculpt and a pretty clean print. The face is a little on the glossy side. Um, I'm not going to lie. It's not awful, but it's noticeable. The armor looks good. Uh, the collar piece that has the shoulder plates attached, I do believe, is new. At the very least, I think that part is new because he has different shoulder pads. I think every other Mando figure we've gotten so far. Honestly, I almost think the entire torso piece is new. Um, it's hard to tell, and it could be the paint ass. I've tried to compare this torso piece to the uh, Super Commando. They're very similar, but I wanna, I'll wanna i do a comparison. I wanna say they're different, but it's hard to say. I'm not sure. But the upper arms underneath the shoulder pads, these upper arms I do believe are reused from the Super Commando mold. And then these lower arms, uh, Axe Woves shares these arms. I do believe they look the same to me. Um, I could be wrong. And then the hands are the same hands we've seen like with like every single Mando, male Mando figure with a little like triangle plate going on here. I really like the shiny uh, metallic blue they used for the gauntlets and the thigh armor though. It looks really nice, it's nice and shiny. And then the grayish white for the torso armor looks really nice and clean. The paint gets a little messy at the edges, but at this scale and at the, at the price point, whatever, I don't expect complete perfection, I suppose. But it looks good. It's got the little bit of red detailing on the torso, and you also have a little bit of silver paint on that little uh, chest-like sternum piece there, which is cool. I do believe the lower torso, the groin waist piece, I do believe this is brand new. I could be wrong, but I think this belt and whole section is new because it's a lot more kind of thinner and narrower than a lot of the other Mando figures. So that's cool. And I think I, I also think the legs are all new as well. Again, could be wrong, but I do not recall any Mando so far having this type of knee and shin armor or boots. And the thigh armor is different from like the Death Watch Mando and uh, Axe Wolves. Like usually Axe Wolves and them have like this style this style of uh, leg armor on this side, like swapped and his is swapped. So I think this is new sculpt. Again, could be wrong, but again, I really like the shiny blue. looks real nice. The white's good. Again, the paint's okay. Some of the paint is a bit iffy on the edges here and there, um, which is a bit unfortunate, but uh, it's not the worst thing ever. I've seen worse, that's for sure. 
articulation wise you have the dumbbell joint at the neck there's not actually a ton of movement here um I don't know, they need to cut more space up there, I think, to let the head move a bit, but you get some articulation. Shoulders, joints move all the way up, and these are on a flexible piece, so they move out of the way. Rotation. Single hinge of the elbows move past 90, which is good, and you can rotate them. A little bit of that blue paint got on the joint, which has been unfortunate, but it's not a big deal. Swivels at the wrist, and you have up and down hinges at each wrist, which is good for these type of characters. Torso joint moves actually pretty well. There's a fair amount of clearance, although it doesn't really crunch that a lot forward, but it goes back an okay amount and you can pivot it and rotate it, so that's good. Hip joints go out good, don't really go back. Spread is decent. Swivel cut at the thigh, that's decently hidden by the thigh armor. Single hinges at the knees that go just shy of 90, which is a little odd. It's not too bad though. And hinges at the ankles that go all the way back and they go up just a bit, but they do kind of catch on to the shin armor, but they go up a bit and you got ankle rockers and then peg holes at the bottom of the feet. So pretty decently articulated, you know, the articulation I pretty much expect from these style of Mando figures, but it's pretty good. In terms of accessories, comes with yeah, everything I'd expect them to come with. comes with, I think this is a brand new uh, jetpack sculpt, um, very similar to like the Boba Fett jetpacks, but it has a different missile on the end. Um, and I actually would not be surprised if they reuse this for like a Cobb Vanth figure because it looks like the similar kind of missile he had on it. But the paint apps are actually pretty nice on this. I like the gray and the silvers and the blues look really good. Interestingly though, it's one of the few jetpacks in a long time that doesn't support the effect parts. There's no hole to plug those in. That's a little unfortunate. It doesn't bug me because I don't even have stands to be able to utilize those, but that just plugs into the jet or to the back like so. goes in nice and secure. It's not going to fall off of them or anything like that. And it actually uh, kind of feels like it hangs a bit lower on his back than on other uh, on other Mando figures, but uh, maybe it's just like the missile being shorter throwing me off on that. But looks good. Of course, he's got to have his pistol. It is just cast in this gray plastic. We've seen this mold a billion times. I, I, pretty much every Mando comes with this, but you can hold it just fine. No holster. You can't store it anywhere. I don't think the costume in the show had a holster. Uh, I would have been okay with Hasbro taking the liberty of just adding a holster just for some weapon storage, because, like, why not? But uh, eh, it's all right. It's the only weapon he comes with, so and the only weapon he uses in the show, I'm pretty sure. So that's not a big deal. Do wish me there's a little bit of paint on it, though. And then lastly, of course, he has his helmet, but unlike... A lot of other figures it's not a removable helmet it is a interchangeable helmet sculpt i know a lot of people prefer this um, it does end up resulting in a much more better scaled and shaped helmet sculpt so that's good um i am a decent i'm kind of a defender of the removable functional helmets only because i know they can do it the uh previsla figure i know it's easier with him because he doesn't know it doesn't have a hairstyle He's completely bald, but they nailed it on that figure. And I think they can do it. And this guy doesn't have crazy hair. I think they could have done the removal helmet and probably would have worked well. But, oh, well, this is the safer option. This way, you're going to get it right. So you just got to uh, pop the head off and pop the helmet on. I do believe this is reused from the Death Watch Mando. They look the same, but I'm not sure. I think, I think so, though. And that looks really good. I like that a lot. This is how I'm going to display the figure. Um, one interesting thing, though, is that the blue on the helmet does not match the shiny blue of the rest of the armor that you see. I don't think that's correct. I think it's supposed to be the same blue. And also, something you see a lot on Marvel Legends, if you're familiar with those, but it almost looks like there's marbleization of the blue on the helmet, um, which looks a little weird on the Mandalorian armor. It's not supposed to be like that. Uh, yeah, it's a little odd. It's not super noticeable, but uh, it's worth mentioning. I think it's supposed to be the same color, and the marbleization is kind of weird. But it looks nice. I like it. You can move the rangefinder like that if you want to. And the paint apps, for the most part, are relatively clean. So, yeah, pretty good. Well, it's not too much else to talk about. We'll do some comparison real quick. 
Um, I guess first with some three and three quarter inch figures. Here he is with the Death Watch Mando from I think it's like a couple of years old now. You can see they definitely look like similar but different. You can see definitely in the waist and the leg areas. I do think there's like completely different sculpts going on there. Um, a lot of different details. The helmets I think are the same. It's a little hard to tell. Honestly, this one almost looks like it's a little longer, like height wise, like a little taller. I don't know. They're probably the same. They look the same. It's hard to tell. I'm trying. Yeah, I don't know. To me, they're basically the same. But these look good together. And then another figure which is pretty similar to the Death Watch Mando. Here is his commander. Axe Wolves. They look pretty cool. I thought he'd be a lot of reuse of this mold, this Axe Wolves. But aside from like the forearms... And the, uh, or the arms in general, I think they're basically quite different, which I do think is cool. This is the original. This is the first release. This isn't the new one that's coming out or has come out. Uh, I don't think I'll get that one. I display Axe Wolves without his helmet on, so I don't really care that they fixed the helmet, and I don't really need another Axe Wolves, so probably not going to get that figure, but those look good. And here he is with, still to this day, one of my favorite uses of the Mando mold, the Super Commando from the Clone Wars. absolutely love this guy. I bought four of these things. Um... But you can see it's super hard to tell. I want to say the this guy has a new torso. It just looks like the armor plates are a bit larger, a bit wider. And this one's a bit smaller. It could be the paint apps that are throwing me off. But I think this one is different. Um, and you can see the jetpacks are definitely different. And then lastly, we will compare him to his Black Series counterpart here. And they look pretty similar. This one does have the consistent blue for the armor on the helmet and the gauntlets and legs. Uh, and honestly, this one's paint apps are a bit cleaner. I won't lie. The Black Series one looks a little cleaner. But they're both pretty good. Um, I do like the this, this figure has more paint apps on the jetpack and has metallic silver as opposed to just this flat gray. That does look nicer. I'm not going to lie. Um, but then this guy has marbleization on his, uh, legs and arms. So, you know, there's some trade-offs. The biggest difference, obviously this guy has a functional removal helmet. And the one flaw this figure has is that the helmet fits on like really loose. Like it doesn't, it just kind of sits on top of the head. It doesn't like actually stay in place. And the sculpt is good. It's just, I think a little too big or something. I don't know. It literally just sits there because you just tear him out and it just falls off. This figure obviously doesn't have that because it's a different head sculpt. Um, I do think... Where's that other head? I'll get that other head real quick. I do think out of the two head sculpts and prints, I think the Black Series one is a lot more accurate. And I honestly just think it looks a little better, to be honest. I think the skin tone looks a little better. I think the eyes and the expression, just the details. I think translated better on the Black Series one, not gonna lie. I might start displaying this one without his helmet on and then just put the helmet on this guy. Um, but yeah, the TVC one still isn't bad or anything, but worth noting. Pop his head back off because I prefer the helmet, but overall, it's a pretty solid figure, you know, not gonna lie. Um, if you are a fan of collecting all the different types of Mandalorians, no matter how obscure or unimportant to the story they were, uh, then I definitely recommend it. I think he's a clean looking one. I like the color scheme, articulates well, uh, not, not, no major issues. It's a good one to have on the shelf. But if you don't care to collect every single Mandalorian they ever make, and you don't you know care to do that, it's definitely an easy pass. This wasn't a uh, super important character to the story or anything like that. So yeah, kind of up to you on that. But Overall, objectively, I think it's a solid release. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next video. May the Force be with you.